Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today I'm going to throw out another bolo. Um, it's something that I look for a lot, and I've showed many of these. It's collectors and just spoons in general. Now, it may sound strange to be looking for spoons, but there are collectors that only collect travel spoons, or just collect sterling spoons of a certain type, or they'll buy one spoon of every pattern they can get, or they collect movie stars, and there's movie stars on them, or Mickey Mouse, or Disney. All of those areas have spoons. There are, there's Mickey Mouse spoons, there's Minnie Mouse spoons, there's Winnie the Pooh spoons, there's spoons from, you know, Walter Lance movies, like, uh, um, you know, Woody Woodpecker. There's spoons from, you know, famous things like Charlie Chaplin, uh, Campbell's Soup Kids, advertising spoons, spoons that came, were given away in cereal even. But we're going to center in on those spoons today, and I'm going to just show you spoons. So we're going to go over the screen right now. Okay, so spoons. Now, a lot of people may think it's crazy on the spoon aspect of it, but I look at every bin I, I see with spoons in it. Everywhere I go, I don't care where it is. There's stainless steel spoons that are worth money. There's silver spoons. There's silver plated. There's nickel silver, which has nothing to do with silver. There's coin silver. You know, there's 750, there's 650, there's 800, there's 850, there's 900, there's 925 and 950 all marked on spoons. There's foreign markings, 84, like on a Russian piece or something. You'll see gold spoons, silver spoons. I mean, whatever the case may be, there's a ton of different spoons out there. And quite often I'm able to find a decent spoon um, with barely any looking. Um, spoons in general can be worth some money. Any hotel one, um, gas stations, train stations, terminals, transportation has the potential to be worth money. Now, there's some airlines that aren't worth a ton of money unless you get a bunch of them. And then again, there's some airlines that have a ton of value. We're going to show you just some higher end ones to give you an idea. But again, the gamut of spoons goes all over the place. Price-wise, there's, you know, 80, 90,000 individual spoons up on eBay at any given time. Um, and, you know, and it, it, there's a hard, high rate of sale on most of these items. So, anyway, first one here is RMS Olympic. Now, this is a transportation spoon. Um, the white star you see in the middle of that flag, that is the white star line. The same one the Titanic came off of. This is off the exact same fleet. Um, we're going to show you the sister ship of it, too, in a little bit here. The Maritania and the Lusitania were both sister ships of the Titanic. The Lusitania was sunk, if you're not familiar with that. Again, it helps to know some history. Um, some of this is covered in school if you, you've you know taken college classes or anything like that. You don't have to be a college pro to know any of this. Do some basic research for yourself and spend some time researching these items. That's the best bet uh, that I can tell you. It works for us. You know, I know what I'm doing because of this. And like these logos, this logo will show up on, on you know, uniform buttons and badges and buttons and other paperwork, postcards even. So if you know the logos and the designs and the names from one category, one niche, you can easily transfer that over to another niche and use the same information. So that's that's why I say research is key to all of this. This one went for over a thousand dollars because it's just stuff from this ship just doesn't show up. And this is not just a white star, but it's a plain white star. White star merged with uh, Cunard. So later items will say um, uh, white star Cunard line. So this is an early piece, a real good one here. Now, a Titanic spoon goes for more than this, just FYI. They do show up occasionally, so because people did make it off the ship at some point or there were items sold um, you know, prior to the ship launching that you could have bought and then left the ship. So probably even on the docks you could have bought it you know, for the maiden voyage. So anyway, um, now here's another interesting one. There's a lot of fraternal and um, ones kind of along this line here. So just keep that in mind. United States Daughters of 1812. Now this is a group of family members from, from um, veterans of the 1812 war. So these don't show up. I've only seen one or two items at all from the Daughters of 1812. Just because the, the folks that would have been members have long since passed away. There are still some members of, you know, the Southern, you know, um, uh, Confederate uh, organizations and sons of Confederate veterans and a few, few things like that. Not many of any of those left at all at this point, but you do occasionally see items from that. I run across badges and buttons and, as well, UCV and things like that too. But this is another prime example um, where research would be key. I would have instantly known just with the 1812 moniker on it. But again, I've dealt with military items for a long, long time. 795 bucks. Now, this is a uh, King Kalu 
Kua. Now, I'm probably pronouncing that that wrong. The one I know the most is King Kamehameha. Um, and that one, I know how it's pronounced because I've heard it said so many times. Um, this is a really good one here. Um, it's a complete set, believe it or not. Now, these are Hawaiian dimes, probably printed by the U.S. government because that was what they usually did. The U.S. government actually printed their postage stamps, and when it was a possession, then we actually took over from there. But at this point, it's late in the game, 1883, and U.S. was already there and, you know, did a lot of stuff there in the country. So chances are it's a U.S.-made dime. So they do have high value just on the dimes alone, not to mention the fact that it's a spoon made out of the dime. It would have probably been made locally in the first place by a jeweler $759 now here's another one now this is as I said the Lusitania now I think I've picked up a couple of these the price fluctuates by how many's on and who's on at the time so and I've said this before you know it takes the right person to buy something at the right price I always try to do on stuff like this buy it now some people don't do it that way you know and you're going to see several different prices on this. So um, this one's five sixty. Now I've got another one coming up here in a few minutes. It's a lot different in the price, and no real rhyme or reason other than who's on and when they sold it. Sometimes if one just sold, it can be to the benefit of you to put one up again, or it can be to your detriment. If the one sold, the one that just sold, sold for a low price, you might want to hold off to see for another month or so. And we do that again. That's why I say I have a ninety day plan, and if it looks like it'd be better to hold on to it for 90 days, I will do that, not sell something right away, even if it's a big high dollar item that may turn over quickly, just because I might be able to double my money if I let those, the the buyers of the last one die off, not die off per se, but, you know, forget about it for a while, and then another one shows up, you'll have new different people buying and bidding. If you try to list one and only sold for, say, 300, and you're going to try and get, you know, the, the higher price because they do sell for higher, you may not get it because they're going to say, well, the last one only went for 300, that's all I want to pay. So just keep that in mind there's many philosophies on this but that's one that i try to follow my 90-day plan now here's frederick Douglass, and i'm not going to go into who he is you should honestly know it's covered in grade school some people may not be into history so it may not be a big ordeal to them he's a statesman i'm not going to go into any more than that um i know him very well i've had trade cards by him there are some postcards that show up um obviously after he's passed if you know anything about him um or don't know anything about him i should say you should look him up because this is something you should know for historical content for items that you may run into. So this is seven fifty for these two spoons. And one of a kind or not, I don't really care about those comments when they say that. I would say that none of these are one of a kind. They're mass produced. There are different variants of each one. So anyway, let's move on. Now this is from a Zeppelin ship. Um, you know, you just have to know a little something about stuff to know. Um, let me see if you can see the marking. Um, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but, you know, I would have known known to look this up. Um, it, it, it's I guess there's some items that you have to have some basic knowledge on. The spoon rest alone, the box that they came in, kind of gives it away to me. Um, it's in a blimp shape for one, so, um, you know, a dirigible. And, you know, this stuff does show up. This one went for $400. I don't know how to give it give you a better way to understand, but they usually look like this. They're smaller. They're not ornate for a lot of these airship ones. Um, they were usually small in size just because you wanted to eliminate the weight as much as possible. So a lot of these might be stainless steel, for example, um, lighter than, say, silver or something along that line. So weight was always a consideration on anything airline. Like if you run into airline spoons, even from like the 50s and 60s, the, the actual silver plated ones or just the standard stock uh, stainless are always small. So just keep that in mind. Now here's a... I don't know if this is, um, yeah, it's not technically a Fabergé, but it was someone from the Fabergé factory that worked there. Now, it's hard to see the actual mark on this one, unfortunately. Um, now, some of these you, you could be marked with um, gold markings. Um, so just keep that in mind because um, some of the markings that you see aren't going to say a, a number that you would recognize, some of the Russian ones anyway. So I don't remember if 84 was a gold marking or not, but they use number systems like that even for sterling. So just keep that in mind. Now, I don't know on this specific one, but sometimes on some items you'll see like 83 or 835. Now, those are 830 parts or 835 parts per, you know, uh, 1,000, which is, you know, full-fledged the entire amount of metal, um, judging on, you know, condition. So some of the markings are 
you know, uh, different than what you'd expect. Like 800 is, is European sterling. Like um, 84 could be 840 um, versus 925, which is American sterling. So other countries have different standards of sterling, and they use different types of sterling, depending on the years and when it was done and stuff like that. Now, earlier pieces may not be marked sterling at all or have any marks like that. You just have to know a little bit. Um, like coin silver. Coin silver is usually like 900 because uh, it's literally like uh, 900's coin silver. It's usually coins that were melted down to make these items. So just FYI, this one's 380. Now the best spoons usually are transportation or military in, in nature. Let's see if you can see this. Now this is a Masonic one, rather interesting. Um, I have not seen this specific uh, spoon, but I have seen this design before on other items. So, you know, once you've seen some Masonic, you're able to distinguish them. Here's a perfect example of coin silver. I don't know how it's marked. They may have just um, tested it. $367 for these. I may have listed them separately for, say, 95 in the, um, let me think, the, uh, the collectibles, um, historical, and then there's actually a fraternal um, section is where Masonic are. It's a fraternal organization. So anyway, now here's King Kamehameha. Now this is probably, she's 1870s, 80s, somewhere in that range, I would imagine. Um, you know, all the way up until the time that we took it over. So anyway, 350 bucks for this one. This one's a really nice example. That's the uh, Hawaiian Royal Seal in the middle. Um, so it's a really interesting item, you know, and these do show up. Don't think it's odd. You can type in King Kamehameha and you'll see this. Now, there are reproductions of this too. This specific spoon, the enamel's terrible though, considering what this one looks like. So anyway, let's move on here. It's, it's not a huge video today, but it's just, I want to cover the whole idea. Now, Fred Harvey in general were like uh, restaurants and, and curio shops that were on the lines of like the, the Santa Fe Railroad and things like that, heading out um, to the west. So, you know, uh, the Plains area and things like that. So anything that says Fred Harvey, I usually look for. Now, Fred Harvey can translate to postcards, too, for those of you who are into postcards now. Postcards, you'll see, every time I see Fred Harvey, I look at it very closely and decide on it. Fred Harvey usually adds a value to it. A menu that says Fred Harvey is worth more than a menu that doesn't have Fred Harvey on it. Just a little FYI on this. Interesting design. This doesn't mean that it was made by Native Americans necessarily. They say Navajo. Let me see if we can see the, the markings on the Fred Harvey markings. It might not even say Fred Harvey on some of these. Now, I say it might not say it because some of these are known patterns. So, you know, there's no sense in putting Fred Harvey on some of them. Some of these could have been dinnerware from an actual restaurant um, by Fred Harvey. So I don't see any markings on these. So this is just one of those things you're going to have to know. Again, this may not be official Fred Harvey as well, too, but it's it's Fred Harvey um, era, I guess you could say. Uh, 20s, 30s-ish, you know, in that era when the West was opening up to, you know, um, you didn't have to be rich or an explorer to go out that way. Trains were, were very readily accessible, um, reasonably accessible as well, too. But anyway, $339 for those four. Now, here's a different one here now. This one's mounted, unfortunately, so it makes it a little harder to see. Let's see if it has any zoom-ins. Nope, yeah, I can't enlarge it. I always hate when you can't see an enlargement. Yeah, they, they've got it m marked out. Um, now, I would have never sold this unless I could have opened it or bought it and messed with it and looked at it closely. I don't trust when I see items, uh, you know, framed like this. You know, it, it, it's no way to know for sure in my book. At least that's how I look at it. Let's see what the paper says on this. Uh, well, these don't actually go together, actually, um, honestly. So let me see here. Does it have the same gentleman's? Yeah, it has his name on it. So I guess that's the, the gist on this. Um... A lot of these Revor ones um, you might think are super, super rare. We've been to Boston, and we found some spoons um, with coffin backs. I'm going to show you a kind of coffin back here in a few minutes, but um, we ran into one that studied under Paul Revere. Just a, a coin silver spoon. It wasn't marked coin silver, obviously. It was from the 1790s. I paid 10 bucks for this thing because it just looked like junk to most people. It was tarnished in the whole works. I knew enough about it to know that, that it was um, something good. Um, and sure enough, we sold it for almost $400 for that spoon that I spent 10 bucks on. So you, you, you somewhat have to take a chance a little bit, but you have to know enough and be able to research to know that you're taking a good chance on something. So anyway, 317 with the paperwork, mind you. 
Again, it's, I, I would bet that this would have sold for more had the spoon been out and they had better pictures on both sides of it, my personal opinion. Um, I'm always cautious on anything framed because, you know, it could have been framed to fool somebody so they won't want to take it out because it's so nicely framed. You know, I could frame something in my house that looks professional because I do have mat cutters and all that stuff too. So, again, don't always take that as being uh, real. A lot of fo uh, bogus items are framed and matted just for display purposes, maybe not necessarily to fool somebody. So, anyway, 317. Again, another Lewisitania one. Now, somebody's polished this one. I probably wouldn't polish something like this, but this one only went for 300 You saw what the last one went for, so, you know, just keep that in mind. And they added the Titanic in here um, because it is the sister ship of the Lewisitania. The, uh, the uh, Titanic um, was on a line. There was three, basically, uh, ships in that same um, structure-wise. The Lusitania, the, Mar uh, the Maritania, and then the Titanic. They're all lines. And you can see photos and advertisements from um, White Star that actually had that in there. So anyway. Now here's another one. This says coffin back. Now this isn't a, a very good example of a coffin back. Um, the early coffins were, I guess, almost octagonal in some aspects of it. These are early just by looking at them, but this isn't a true coffin back from what I've personally uh, seen and see the definition of. But again, it's an early piece. Most of the markings are worn off. Somebody obviously knew what that is. Um, and, and that's all it takes sometimes to know. Just by the style, the design, the construction, the material it's made of, people can tell. So this one's 300 now here's Shanghai International Settlement. Now this is when it was still under, you know, probably British control, I would say at the time. You can see it's written in Chinese and English, so to speak. Now I'm not sure what country this would have been uh, produced by. It's kind of hard to tell on this one. There's no, uh, there's just a small little marking on that. Let's see if, um, let's see if, uh, no, you can't see it. Um, but it's hard to tell, you know, who who made these. You can't see the mark very well. So, you know, anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's just what the topic is on this one. Um, you know, I think this one actually sold as a buy it now. I would have probably held on for this one. I would have probably put this up for $500. Now, you may have not known what this was for had you not had some basic knowledge on it. Now, I would have recognized this to some extent just by the international flags. I've seen similar items with similar logos on them. Again, just because I do look for China items constantly. And you see, I talk about them all the time. China is now, you know, in a booming era for folks with money in the country. So the collectibles are being swapped up now for the first time in, you know, probably the history of the country. So these people are now able to buy and there's, you know, there's wealthy people in China that now collect stuff. There's Americans that collect as well too. So anyway, and, and Chinese um, immigrants and such forth too. So anyway, really good item, 288. Um, now, this is a Civil War one. Now, I know it's a spoon knife set, but I just wanted to, I wish they would have shown uh, blow-ups here. Um, really hard to show you the markings on this, but again, these slider ones show up. There's many versions all the way up to World War II, even Boy Scout versions, Girl Scout versions. Um, but this is one of the earliest um, combined, um, like a utility set like this. So anyway, now it's not necessarily specifically a Civil War item, but this was used most exclusively by, you know, Civil War soldiers. Now this was, would have been the Union soldiers on this one here. Most of them sell in the 200 plus range. I've seen them up to four and five, depending on the condition. There was some that I've seen with cases in them that usually go for the highest amount. Now I don't know if the cases are original or made later on, but they do sell with cases occasionally. Sometimes there'll be a little leather case or something. There's officers' versions of some of these that are worth even more. So 240. Now here's a World's Fair. Again, I talk about these. This is one of those cross-category items, which I talk about are the best items to always get. Now this could be a silver collector. This could be a World's Fair collector. This could be a spoon collector. There are many options. This could be a collector of just St. Louis items. So again, this is, has four at least, even Art Nouveau, so that could be a fifth one. So there's so many categories certain items can go in. The more categories they can go in, the better they are going to do. 
the better the material too on something like this uh, sterling versus you know just coin silver or just plated plated are always worth less than something like this now there are some versions of plated uh, silverware and, and spoons that are worth way more than you know solid silver just because there may be less of them or it may be a specific design that was not made any other way so anyway now this is a tea caddy spoon kind of thing now this spoon would have been set on the table and you'd put your tea bag on it um, this is semi a British um, thing here, not necessarily always, but this one went for 236. It's from 1911. Um, age doesn't necessarily mean value on some of these, so just keep that in mind. Age is not always the deciding factor. So this one's well marked. Let me go back here. Let's see if there's actually a close-up of just the touch marks. Um, right there's a nice engraving. Let me see if we. There's the touch marks. Now these touch marks all mean something. Um, I believe the lion here is London, um, if I'm not mistaken. That's probably the part of the manufacturer of the era. That is the actual date mark right there. So, again, you need to know something. There are um, sites online that have all these broken down. I actually have a hardbound book on um, you know, sterling and silver marks in general, which includes silver plate. Now, that is one book that I would always recommend if you see a lot of these and have sourcing. Now, if you don't, just use the online source because you're going to be wasting money on things that you don't really need if, if it's not, you know, your your area that you center in on. I, I buy all this stuff if I see it. So anyway, as I said, 236. Again, I'm just showing you some of the higher end ones and some of the oddball ones. There's tens of thousands of spoons that sell for 15, 20 bucks or more across the board that you can get for, you know, pennies most of the time. Now, this is a modern one here, so um, um, Holt Howard. Now, there's a whole series of these pixie coffee um, cups. There's, you know, whole servings even, actually, creamer and sugar sets and bowls and, and, you know, servings pieces and things like that. It's a whole line. So even if you just saw one of these, you'd get 50 or 60 bucks. Even if, like, the handle has some minor cracking to it, it would still sell. These are extremely rare across the board, $227. So anyway, nice set. Now, this is North German Lloyd. This is a steamship company line. Again, steamships and transportation in general are worth money. Let me see if it says North Lloyd on it. No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, I don't see that on here, but you would have to know a little bit. Now, if you typed in um, Crown Prince Wilhelm, now that's what this basically is. That's the name of the ship. Now, I've had pieces from this exact same ship, including postcards, and I believe I've probably even shown a few in my hauls. So they're usually good items. This one's $279.99. They did free shipping, which I don't do, but anyway, very nice enamel work. Most anything with enamel work like this on it from one of these ship lines is worth some money. Again, if you looked up the name of the ship, you would have seen that it's North German Lloyd line. Now, you just got to know a little something or be able to look these up. That's all it is. It's research, 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 research on these items. So anyway, now here's... um. Transarctic uh, flight. Now this is an airship. Now again, this is transportation to some extent, but this is also explorers. This has many different niches: spoon collectors, transportation collectors, you know, explorer collectors, um, just zeppelin and blimp collectors in general. So there's at least four or five categories this one can go into, plus the country itself, you know. So anyway, this would have been a, a thing that I would have sunk some money into if I had to right off the bat, you know, well worth 100, 125, even 150 bucks risk on this item as long as you know it's legit now, I haven't seen any fake items on this one here let's see how it's marked um, 830 um, or 8305 now that's probably like 830 silver maybe not it's hard to tell on this one it could just be plated um, I'm not going to go into looking at the description because this one the topic alone would makes it worth four hundred and forty five dollars so anyway now, um, World's Fair. Now, I've shown some from the Chicago World's Fair in my haul videos. I had a, a little haul of them. I've gotten six or seven at, at a time. Sometimes you're lucky enough to get 15 or 20. Sometimes you can even find stuff from the Columbian Exposition still in a box, believe it or not. Um, but this one's better than most. I haven't seen this one. It's colored. It's it's gold-plated, I would have imagined. Um, I think it's Shagil or something like that they call it. I could be pronouncing it wrong, but there's a process where they gilt sterling. Um, and I've got some spoons here um, in my personal um, inventory that, that are made similarly to this, though. $218. This might have been issued in a set, but chances are it had a little box with it as well, too. Leather-covered wood and the whole works with uh, velvet in inside. So anyway, now here's another set. Now these are... Um, shovel size. They look like little shovels. And these were for sugar, for iced tea. 
I don't think they have any other pictures. This might have been when the photos were lost. Um, let me see if it says if it's sterling. Well, these aren't even sterling. It's just the design here. Now, there are sterling versions of this. Um, yeah, this uh, says Bakelite on here. Catalin or Catalin. Um, I'm not sure how that's pronounced technically, but either way, it's it's a good item. I would say that's Bakelite just by looking at the, the, the coloring of these. Um, you've seen a bunch of, once you've seen a bunch, you can kind of get a gist on it. And there's ways to tell on, on Bakelite. But anyway, very good item here. Uh, as I said, 213. Now, here's another Navajo piece. Now, I've been told, and, and people arguing with me on the, the swastika, the swastika has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years as a peace symbol. So just because it has a swastika on it, and, and this was brought up a while ago over postcards. Now, a 1910 postcard who has a swastika on it, it's a peace symbol. That's all it is. It was twisted by someone else. It was, you know, tilted on a little bit of an angle and then used by, by Hitler um, in, in his regime. So again, it's not a bad symbol. It was used, misused wrongly. So it's a Native American symbol. You can see it in other cultures. For some reason, the same image, the same swastika design was used globally at some point where, you know, other cultures who didn't have any interaction with, with each other uh, came up with it. So again, this is one of those oddball things. This one I would have jumped on to um, the bow and arrows and the links. All. I mean, it's just a, a real good example of this type of of silverware. Now they don't always have to be marked. Um, does it say who it is? It doesn't even have a name. It's just Navajo it says. There's no real way to know it's Navajo but chances are it is. This is a tourist piece. Um, probably hand hammered out of you know coin silver if that was the case. Um, silver wise they say silver whether it was tested or not. Um, yeah coin silver. And again they just used coins. As I said that's why the name coin silver comes into play. So anyway 202 as I said. Now, again, stainless steel spoons can be worth money, too. Uh, um, most of the stainless steel I've seen, that, what's the WFM, I think, is the other brand. Um, I could be mixing that up, but I'm pretty sure it's WMF uh, or WFM. It's another stainless steel German one. Usually when I see stainless steel German spoons of any kind, I always quickly look them up and grab them in my hands till I can figure it out because a lot of those are worth some money. And I've sold single spoons for 40 and 50 bucks that were just stainless steel in big bins that anybody else in the world would have walked right by thinking it's just junk stainless steel. That is not the case when you see German marked stainless steel. Always look it up. Always, always, always. And this is dance. It's a name brand. So again, these are mid-mod century items. They always sell. Always. So again, I always buy these kind of things um, and the last item I just picked out this is um, Victoria Louise now this is again you could have looked this up and known it was Hamburg American line 800 again as I said this is a British or European made piece um, German actually it would be uh, I would imagine too so and it was actually you know constructed by hand the way it looks um, by the mark but anyway it's a nice piece all the way around uh, let me see is that enamel or is that plique de jure um, either way, it's a real nice piece. That's interesting that the it must be an inset of enamel or pottery or something in the handle. The, the colored piece is the blue and uh, or white, I guess I, I would say. But anyway, it's a very nice piece. Um, the, the lady the ship was named after is actually on there too. Um, so anyway, very, very, very nice piece. Again, you can look up a lot of these pieces by the name of the ship. Anything with the ship I look for and, and hold on to and look up until I can, you know, figure it out. But I'll usually invest five or ten bucks no matter what into something like this. You know, maybe even fifteen or twenty. Um, but I try to look them up on the spot. Don't ever just assume something's worth money ever. Even if it says Titanic, it may be a fake piece. So anyway, 187 bucks. Um, but again, this is just a touch on spoons. Again, these are all cross category interest all the ones we're showing you right now for the most part now maybe not necessarily the german stainless steel but it, it fits into the mid-century category it fits in the german category and serving silverware category as well too so technically most all of these have multi-category interest um, but that's what i have for you today well, there you go. There's another bolo that we look for constantly. And as I've said, I've shown spoons here. Just the other day, I got a big uh, haul on some spoons from the 1898 um, Spanish-American War era. Uh, they were of the Maine, the USS Maine. So again, things show up. Things show up from vintage areas. They're not all worth a ton of money, as you saw. But again, spoons can sell very high, and there's a lot of collectors. And again, as I said, the more niches that that category or that item that you can find can go into, the 
better you're going to do. Like with the spoon, there's collectors for Disney, there's collectors just for spoons, there's collectors for movie collectibles, there's collectors for travel. So one spoon could be listed in four or five categories very easily. So again, the more categories that item is, is in or is bought in, the better off you are. So hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when we post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.